Now, I want to give you uh, another story about Moses. Um, I wrote down so Moses uh, when he went to Mount Sinai for 40 days like stayed up on the mountain talking to God for 40 days God had used Moses as his servant now this is what happens when you're God's servant you don't just you don't just stay as a Christian because most would have been like okay I'm a Christian walk around saying I'm a Christian what religion I'm a Christian Moses was actually obeying God so he did God's work as you realize the more you do God's work the more you see him this Moses had a chance to be in the glory of God for 40 days imagine not eating this guy we don't know what was happening spiritually we just know that the, what the bible says he was in the presence of god but who knows what was, was happening he was probably in heaven like because like when he was on mount sinai he had left aaron right at the bottom of the uh, mountain he had he had gone up with this other guy i forgot his name and these other two guys but they never followed him they stayed there they stayed they stayed um, further away from him before he went up to Mount Sinai because there's Mount Sinai and then Mount Sinai like up the top. So he was there alone for 40 days. The other ones had to wait for 40 days, wait for him. Imagine the amount of faith they had to have. They never even disobeyed. The ones that disobeyed were the ones that were all the way at the bottom with Aaron. Okay, they were like, we're getting tired. They were so impatient. They created their own gods and started to worship him and sacrifice. They literally were shedding blood, shedding blood for this 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 handmade god had gotten so mad you know what that kind of reminds me that god is a god of emotions too you guys need to understand this he's a very jealous god like he created us it's like cheating on him like when you go and obey other gods you're cheating on god it's like cheating on your partner being disobedient so god you know god was like okay let me chill Moses had gone down he got so mad but i know that you guys might be like they were so disobedient you know uh, very impatient and don't be mad at those people sacrificing you know to this handmade God I want you guys to put yourselves in their shoes you guys are literally like them you a Christian who used to be in the Word of God instead of trusting God's timing it took Abraham almost a hundred years if I'm not wrong or or plus to get to get a child to get kids and trust me, you know, the older you get, you know, the less you're more likely to like have kids. This guy trusted God with all his heart, all his might. But Sarah actually laughed when the angel showed up and was like, you're going to have a child. You know, she laughed. She was like, me? Like, that's funny. You know, like, are you guys out of your mind or what? I don't think she even believed those were angels from God. They literally were disobeying God, sacrificing. Do not even be like, okay, you know what? Those were bad people because you're being bad yourself. You're not obeying God. You're not obeying God. And another thing is Moses afterwards could not make it to the promised land because he disobeyed God. Okay, now I'm teaching about disobedience, about obedience, because it's very important in the Christian life. Faith without works is dead. Works is obedience. I want you guys to obey God. You guys know what to do already. I know, I know right now the enemy is like, oh, it's so hard though, like, do that fasting and all that, like, deny myself and, you know, are you not ready to accept Christ? You're not ready then. You're not a Christian then. Do not identify yourself as a Christian if you're going to be here and just like, like, just be like this and that. Knowing exactly how much you need God's love in your life again. Knowing exactly how much you need God, I want you to repent. I will have a prayer at the end of this video, so keep watching. I know the video is pretty long, but this is a call for repentance. So repenting is, is something full of wisdom that I want you guys to um, know. Because wisdom, you cannot explain wisdom. You can explain knowledge and understanding, but you cannot explain wisdom as, a one, as, as, a, as just one sentence. So obedience is the works, because faith without works is dead, okay? Obeying God is exactly what God calls us to do. The whole point of this message is not even for those who never experienced God. It's for those who have experienced God, who used to be very diligent and zeal for God. Now, because of the cares of this world, the worries of this world, you just push God away. Matthew 6 verses 33 once again says, Seek first the kingdom of God, and all that shall be added on to. So, once again, seek first the kingdom of God. How do I seek first the kingdom of God? I have put down uh, videos in the description and a message in the description box on how to do that. Go ahead and read that after this video, after I pray for you guys. Now, also remember to read Psalm 91. That's, the, that's God's promise for you if you accept him. And it's not just that. This is just a glimpse. It's a little, it's, it's like a taste. It's like a, it's like a appetizer. You know, it's an appetizer. This is, this is... A, it's crazy. This is an appetizer. 
of what God will give you. And when God says, seek everything and all else shall be added to, he means after you seek him, like you feel like you know that yourself. Like I don't even have to explain this. You know that seeking God is the beginning of all wisdom. And you know that putting him first, seeking him first, everything always goes well. When you put him first in the morning, I know it may be hard, but that's where sacrifice comes from. You have to sacrifice for God. Sacrifice your sleep. Sacrifice your time of going to hang out with friends, with people in the world, people who don't even add up to your life, with people who don't even know what you're going through, with people who don't even understand that God is calling you and you know that the maker that made you has a calling for you. He's calling you because he has a future for you. Those who, who those in the world, they're trying to find themselves. But you finding yourself in God is much greater than them trying to find themselves in the world because they'll 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 keep pushing, they'll keep pushing and pushing, even if they find the wealth, the everything that they've looked for, even if they find, and trust me, it's not gonna be that easy. But even if they find, they're not gonna be happy. But you, the maker that made you, is calling you. What's the best way to get to know yourself? You don't even know yourself. God knows you more than you know yourself. It's God. It's God. It's God. Would you rather ask questions regarding a book to somebody else that's read it or somebody that's made the book? It's somebody that's made the book. I know that probably not click, but would you rather go ahead and ask questions regarding a book to somebody that never made the book, but they, they've read it, or someone that made the book, right? Would you rather go and ask questions to somebody that's read the book or somebody that made the book they created the book themselves they made the book would you rather ask questions regarding yourself to your friends people who don't even know you you don't even know yourself you don't know yourself through tapping into your inner self no or would you rather ask the creator the one that made you the one that made you okay Seek God. He created you. The more you seek Him, you put Him first, you realize so much about yourself. You become yourself. You become yourself. I've become the best person I've ever been after seeking God. I've become so set free. So free. So happy. So happy. So wise. So wise so understanding so knowledgeable this is all the work of god you find yourself in god because god created you he created you way before he created you he knitted you he knitted you right in your mommy's womb like he knitted you he knows you all right psalms 91 actually this is a call for repentance so i'll just read the whole thing since you guys have been patient enough to watch this video till now i'll just go ahead and read psalms for you guys so psalms 91 says those who live in the shelter of the most high i want you guys to read it with me pull out your bibles wherever you put this you stored the bible away because i know you definitely stored it away because something very important to you uh bring out your bible pause this video and bring out your uh, your bible do not read it off your phone i told you guys to turn off your phones in the beginning do not read off your phone um put your phone on dnd or turn it off okay those who live in the shelter of the most high will find rest in the shadow of the almighty this I declare about the Lord. He alone is my refuge, my place of safety. He is my God and I will trust him for he will rescue you from every trap and protect you from deadly disease. He will cover you with his feathers. He will shelter you with his wings. His faithful promises are armor and protection. Do not be afraid of the tears of the enemy. Do not be afraid of the tears of the enemy. Do not be afraid. Nor the arrow that flies in the day. Do not dread the disease that stalks in darkness. Nor the disaster that strikes at midday. Though a thousand fall at your side. Though ten thousands are dying around you. These evils will not touch you. You will not be touched. And it starts from those who live in the shelter of the Most High God. The reason why you're a Christian and you've been touched, you've been going through the hardest things, the hardest furnace of your life is because you, you, ha you have not been living in the presence of the Most High God. Not saying that Christians do not experience hardships, no, but they experience hardships in training. They don't experience hardships in, in tempting, in temptation and fall temptation and just sin and sin and sin, no. They literally, they get trained by God. They face those temptations, but they conquer, they go through them. He literally says, do not be afraid of tears of the night, nor the arrow that flies in the day. They are at peace. 
the Holy Spirit empowers them because they they live in the they live in the shelter of the Most High, okay? And that's seeking God's presence. I want to face this whole thing to you watching this as a specifically. I want to talk to you individually, okay? Now you've asked God for something. He has not done it yet. You've been so tired of wanting it. But think of Abraham, and this is the whole reason why you left the things of God. You asked him for something. He didn't do it for you. You gave up. Just like the people of Israel, they disobeyed God. They gave up because they're like, where is this God? And listen, like their disobedience was consistently over and over and over, but he loved Israel. He still took them to the promised land. You know how far in the promised land from Egypt was? It wasn't even 40 minutes away. It was so close because of disobedience. We're just going circles as, as, as Christians and circles and circles and circles and circles. We're meant to evolve. Okay? Elevate. Elevate. We're meant to elevate. In the walk of Christ, we're meant to move forward, experience supernaturalness. Okay? If you're not experiencing that, then you have a problem. Number one, the reason why God delayed what you prayed for, it's because you left him. Disobedience does not make you evolve. Okay? Disobedience makes you stay exactly where you are. Now, sometimes in order for God to bless us with something, we have to be spiritually mature or ready for it. Through praying, through fasting, through just surrender you know because sometimes he can give you something and you may not receive it because of how immature you are you may not see it as valuable you may not take good care of it because of how immature you are so you have not received it because you're not staying in the presence of god you're you're not going to receive okay you've also not received because your motives are wrong you have probably asked for something that is contrary to what he's called you to do so he's not going to give it to you just so you know so make sure write this down just make sure it's something that you've whatever you've asked him i know you know what it is you've asked him for something is it good does it glorify him will it glorify him will it glorify him if it'll glorify him just know then yes he will give it to you but you have to stay in his presence for as long as you can just i gave you an example of abraham he stayed in the presence of god he was faithful to god despite of his age he was so faithful to god anything is possible through god Okay? He never gave up on God. But last year, you gave up on God. This year, you're still giving up on God. Do not give up on God this year. Accept Him. Enter the ark. Be locked in. Stay in this presence. Those who rest, who abide in God, who? They'll not just be saved. They'll not just be saved. They'll receive exactly what they ask for God. Make sure your motives are right about what you ask God for. Okay? Make sure that your motives are right. And if they're right, just know this, I'll give you the answer. He will give you what you asked for, but you have to get into the presence of God. Once again, I have attached a video on the secret place, which is the presence of God. You did your own thing because God did not give you what you want. In the process of doing that, you got hurt. You got rejected. You got abandoned by people you loved. You got mistreated by people you never thought would mistreat you. You got in the... Guys, I'm telling you, you are the light of the world. You cannot abide in darkness. Darkness and light did not get along. They do not get along. Why is it that you've chased over a man that's in darkness? Put your full trust in this man. Put your full trust in this girl that's in darkness. They've let you down obviously because the enemy does not want them to get saved. The enemy does not want you as a light to be a light in their lives. So he's used them to literally put you down as a light. And so your, your light is dimmed. You're still a light, but it's dimmed. Do not be like the five foolish brides. Do not be like them. Begin reading the book of Matthew to remind yourself of the scriptures. Because the five wise brides, they kept their lamps going. Those are the Christians that keep their light on. But the five foolish ones, they had lights. They literally had lights. You are a light, but you're not adding oil. You're not praying. You're not seeking God. You're not fasting. You're not obeying. Obedience is keeping your light on. Keeping your light on. You could have easily saved that individual. But instead, it reversed the other way. Instead of you being saved and staying in the presence of God, you let the presence of God to stay with this person. This person made you exactly what the enemy wants you to be. Lost, disordered, unloved. And you right now, you're still looking, trying to seek love. Trying to seek. You're never going to find love. God will bring you a husband. God will bring you a wife. But you always got to stay in the presence of the Most High God. God had me write this down. Instead of running to the one who called you, you ran to unholy addictions. You ran to sex. After God had not given you what you have asked for in time, in your timing, you ran to 
unholy addictions, sex, sleeping with every kind of women, every kind of man that showed you the smallest glimpse of attention, the smallest glimpse of affection, the smallest glimpse of of love you just ran to that you ran to unholy addictions such as sex money alcohol just all that all that filthiness and god is telling you come to me my son come to me my daughter i will love you i will give you what you want you have to trust in me this this bible is not just a bible as you know this bible becomes real when you read the bible it becomes very real this is this is hope this is hope. This is this is where it all begins. This is where it all begins. God gives us stories, numerous stories of how people trusted him, of how people disobeyed him. Over and over and over and over through the whole Bible from Genesis to Revelation. It's just it tells us stories of how many people disobeyed him, many people obeyed him, and what the consequences were. Okay, we wanna keep going. We don't wanna just be Christians and stay in one place. We have to keep going in faith. We have to keep going. Because God tests us. We're we're signing up for battle. Just so you guys know, we're signing up for battle. This is not, this is not, um, like, people take it so lightly. This is not like, this is not something to be taken lightly. The more you abide in God, He will literally show you how powerful it is to be a Christian. This is just the beginning of, like, seriousness. It's getting worse. It's gonna get worse. So Noah's done building the ark. These are the times of Sodom and Gomorrah. Find God. He will not only answer you, save you from times we're in, but He will love you. Pour peace upon you he will he will break every demonic stronghold upon you he will give you a breakthrough do not be so worried about money do not be so focused and i mentioned money earlier and alcohol i forgot to really go like into depth with that many people are distracted because of money many people love money many people the love of money is the beginning of all evil you're not going to be saved you're not going to go to heaven if you love money because if you love money how can you give if you love money how can you give it all how can you give it up if you love money if you love money and it's like an addiction god breaks every addiction like he can do anything he's the god of the impossible always pray to him for anything and he will deliver you okay now it is time for us to pray now let's pray father god in the name of jesus thank you for the person watching this please lead them through repentance and surrender to begin what you've been calling them to do which is repentance in jesus name i want you guys to repeat after me okay father god in the name of jesus Please forgive me of my sins. Please forgive me for I have ran astray. Just like Israel. Please forgive me for I have run astray. Because of what people did to me. Because of pain. Please forgive me for leaving you. Please forgive me for ever cursing you. Please forgive me for all that I have done. I surrender today in Jesus name. For today is the day of salvation. I ask that you please cleanse away my sins. I ask that you please lead me to the right churches and people and spiritual fathers. I ask that you please eliminate all those branches that are not growing, that are not going to produce me any fruit, that are not going to do me any good, that are not going to allow me to seek you first, that are not going to allow me to be led by you to do your will on earth as it is in heaven. In the name of Jesus, please lead me protect me, provide for me. For Psalms 91 tells me about your promises. Please God, prove it to be true in my life. Please God, open my eyes that I may understand. Please God, soften my heart that I may understand. Humble me. Take me through fasting and prayer. Take me through your word, God, that I may be tried. Take me through tests that I may be tried, just like Jesus Christ was tried by the enemy after the 40-day fast, just like the apostles, God. Please help me, provide for me, help me with wisdom, help me with knowledge, and help me with understanding. Above it all, Father God, God, help me obey help me do the faith and the works please god help me through the process i want to be fully in for entering the ark god it means i have to be fully in and never leave the ark so in jesus name god enable me to never leave the ark to never look back in the mighty name of jesus christ i pray amen all right guys i'm so excited for those who've been watching till the end please do not ignore this uh, begin exactly putting god first like as to, as so to say right now delete many things remove things out of your life like this is a call to repentance so you've got to remove things that keep you away from god it could be anything makeup it could be anything not that makeup is bad anything is bad if you use it above god just so you know now obey god obey god's calling he has called you to do great works if he showed you your future today you'd probably pass out that's how big your future has how bright your future is okay now seek god above all else like if you have to print matthew 6 verses 33 this is my second time saying this on youtube if you have to print that verse out just so when you wake up you're reminded that every day print it out 
Seek God first and all else. I mean, everything. Like he literally tells you, this is a promise he tells you. This is a promise he, he tells Abraham. This is a promise he tells a lot of people. He told everybody this. You know that. Subconsciously or consciously, you know that. Do not forget that. Do not allow your emotions to drive you crazy. God is not driven by emotion, just so you know. Because if he was driven by emotions, you know, he'd have give you what you wanted in your timing. God gives you what you need. God gives you what you also want in the right time. Because usually what you want is usually designed for your destiny. But if it's not designed for your destiny, then he doesn't give it to you. Okay, always remember that. Now, thank you so much for watching this video. Once again, I am Lucy. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new, welcome to my channel. Subscribe. Comment down below if you're blessed. Say, I am blessed in the name of Jesus. And send this video to one of your friends that you truly love and you want them to hear the same thing. And the being Christians, you know, just send them to just send them to as many people as you can the ones that you know will listen to this word okay now i'm just i'm lost of words guys i'm very excited for this new calling for you guys thank you guys once again for watching have a beautiful and wonderful day bye